Tell Me About It is brought to you by Don Franklin Auto of Glasgow, an extreme health club. Tell me about it. Glasgow Electric Plant Board, Channel 6, the local channel. That's right. You uh, in, had a good week away, um, spent some time in Lexington, uh, braving and all and stuff. And money. And money. Yes. <laughs> they advertise it as the greatest show in Kentucky. Uh huh. They should have named it the most expensive show in Kentucky. You know... Before we get to the results of the games, I think yes. it's kind of a fascinating discussion about how that state tournament works on the boys' side. Now, it's not the same in every other sport. The, that boys' state tournament has been the thing that has basically funded so much of what the KHSA does in sponsoring other state tournaments and other sports mm -hmm. through the years. But also, I feel like you know we've heard complaints in recent years, and not just have not just since COVID, mm -hmm. but prior to COVID about attendance and the decline in revenue from the state tournament and that kind of stuff. And they're trying to make up that difference, I'm sure, by the prices and that kind of thing. But from what I understand, like if you pay the ticket prices, that's one thing. The concessions and all, that's Rupp Arena. Right. So they don't, they, right. KHSA didn't get that money. Rupp Arena does. Right. But what I didn't understand, James, was, you know, the, the first session that I went to on Wednesday morning, um, you know, everybody said it's, you know, you need to get your tickets online. Mm -hmm. Well, I go to Ticketmaster, get my ticket, and I paid, the ticket was $24, and then the fee was, I paid almost $46 for a ticket for one session. Really? Yes. So that's the fee. That is the Ticketmaster fee. And these days in the state of Kentucky, they pass a law that you also tax online transactions. Mm -hmm. So that's also the law that has been passed that now taxes online transactions. I'm guessing it's also, it's not a, the same law, but it's akin to the law that now your uh, guy who cuts your grass has to charge a tax for it. Correct. That they've, they're nickel and diming people to death with these kinds of fees because they don't actually want to, you know, have income taxes and that kind of stuff. They'd rather have fee taxes. I'm a, I'm, I like to fish at Pay Lakes, and they have to charge a fee. Yeah. Um, a cave tax. Land Recreation, a where my restaurant is, um, when we pay our dues, we have to pay taxes. Yeah. Recreational taxes is what they call it. Yeah. So, you know, those are the changing, uh, changing ways that the Kentucky state government has decided to collect money, which then gets tacked on to everything else you us usually do such as paying for those tickets uh, there at, for the state tournament. You know, and so that's our, when, when people are like, the KHSA is gouging us. Well, some of it's the KHSA, but mm -hmm. not all of it. Some of it is Rupp Arena. Some of it is the laws that have been passed in recent years that increase fees and taxes. Some of it probably is a uh, tax in the city of Lexington, the entertainment tax that they mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's part of it, too. So all that. Oh, I'm sure Lexington's in. getting their money because they had 120 police officers in front of Rupp Arena every game <laughs> as if it was the NCAA tournament. So let me ask you this question then. Was it worth it? The best state tournament that I've been to in the last 15 years. Okay. So the games the games are still great. For the, the games most. were, there were only two the blowout good. games. Yeah, the environment's still great. Uh, Woodford County brought a crowd that was, it looked like a, a UK game. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had one whole half of the lower level filled up. Um, you know, it, the Lexington schools didn't bring a big crowd. I was really disappointed in that. Yeah. Um, but... And, you know, it is what it is. They're kind of like Bowling Green. Yeah. They have dominant teams, but they do not support like the other schools do. Yeah. Um, Warren Central had a great a great crowd um, every every session. They were kind of spread out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, again, it is what it is. But, you know, it's hard if, if you have three children. Um, you're driving from Bowling Green to Lexington. Mm -hmm. You've got to now buy five tickets, mama, daddy, and three kids. You know, you're, you're way over a hundred bucks just to get in the game. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
you know, some people just aren't financially set to be able to support that way. Yeah. Uh, I know they did some ticket sales with the schools, um, but, you know, some people, hey, you know, Warren Central won last night. Let's go to the game in the morning. Yeah. Well, you can't go to the school and buy the tickets, so now you have to buy them at the gate or you have to get online and buy them. Right. Um, but after talking to um, a lot of the media guys that were there, the, the thing that stood out the most – and you're going to think I'm crazy. The thing that stood out the most for the whole state tournament was Warren Central's band, You Don't Want These Dragons. <laughs> they had everybody in Rupp Arena singing it Saturday. Yeah. And, you know, I had a guy message me and say, dude, that may be the most catching song that I've heard at a sports venue in a long time. Yeah. They, they did a good job even when they were at, uh, at uh, Diddle Arena for the regional tournament. They were good. The Russellville band was good. You you really liked the Russellville band. band was the best band in the fourth region, <laughs> I think. Um, but getting to the tournament, um, you know, I saw really good, really good talent. Yeah. You know, some of the bigger names in the state of Kentucky. That was something that worked out this year, where you ended up with North Laurel there with Reed Shepard and Lyon County there with Travis Perry. Yes. You know, two of the highlight players in the state this year, plus the folks from George Rogers Clark, plus the uh, I think the only one that we really missed out on was a guy at uh, Holy Cross Covington who was like the number two scorer in the state. Or and we missed out on Sir M Malanga yeah, from right. Evangel. Yeah. But with all those guys that were there, you know, uh, Travis Perry mm -hmm. broke King Kelly Coleman's uh, all-time scoring record. Yep. He is not the all-time leading scorer in the state of Kentucky. No, that would be Whitney Creech. Miss Creech that played at Jenkins yep. and at WKU. WKU. And she's an assistant at WKU now. And the lady toppers actually got on Twitter and said, hey, y'all need to back <laughs> up with that all-time leading scorer because we, you know, we. She has 5,300 points. 5,500 5, 5, points. 55. Here's the other thing about her. She didn't shoot threes. No. I mean, if you look, go back at her high school box score, man, it's like 55 points a game with like one three-pointer taken. The point I was making about getting to see all those kids, those talented kids, mm -hmm. I conversed with some guys that were over the Kentucky-Ohio All-Star team mm -hmm. to several college coaches. Cade Unseld was the best player in the Kentucky State Tournament. Yeah. He was. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Damarion Walkup, mm -hmm. who had a phenomenal tournament. Yeah. Of course, Chappelle Whitney is Chappelle Whitney Player of the Year. He was Mr. Basketball Candidate as well as the MVP of the state tournament. Yep. But the the, the name that, that people really left out of the conversations a lot, mm -hmm. that I – if this kid didn't have the tournament that he had, I don't know if Warren Central could have won. Yeah. Amari Glover. Yeah. The kid did everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything. Yep. When they needed a play, he made that play on the defensive end of the court. Mm -hmm. um, the kid Jasper Johnson mm -hmm. from Woodford County. Yeah. Four star, five star recruit. Amari Glover crossed him up at the top of the key, and the kid was kind of on ice skates, and he's not even the point guard. Yeah. Just Warren Central was just so athletic. Kate Unsel shot probably four threes from Warren Central's parking lot in Rupp Arena. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, they were – and they never hit the rim. Mm -hmm. And they were just so impressive. So, so impressive. They were really dialed in the whole year. You know, I mean, they did have that loss to Madison Central, I think it was, where I don't know if Madison Central missed a shot in that game. And – I saw where uh, Coach Unsold was talking about they'd had the six days off because of the weather, and they just yes. went. And he knew they were in trouble because his guys were, like, not very serious going into the game. They thought they won before they walked on before the Before they got there, yes. And he they, he said, you know, in that post-game press conference, he talked about that was one of the best things that happened to him all year because mm -hmm. it woke him up to the idea that you can't take anybody for granted. Yep. And so, you know, I, I thought – from that point, outside of the fourth quarter against Bowling Green in that regional final, I thought they were not only clearly the best team, they played with such poise and tenacity and pace that people couldn't really keep up with for the most part. And, you know, Coach Unsold is one of the very few 
high school players that won a state championship and coached a state championship. Yeah. Um, I didn't really realize that. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot. Yeah. You know, I was, now that you mentioned that, I was trying to think. I, I mean, you know, there aren't a whole bunch that just register with you when you think about it that way. Plus, I saw, what was it, Tim Riley he was with at the mm -hmm. end of there. At the end of the game. Got a hug from him. Yes. You know, two guys who have made a real mark on basketball in this part of the state. Of course, Riley was a Warren East graduate, right? So he's – and then coached at Warren Central, coached at Caverna for a while mm -hmm. too. So and LaRue. Know, and LaRue had a huge impact around here. Yep. And um, we're going to take a break, but before we take the break, I wanted to shout out South Warren High School. Okay. They actually put on their marquee – Congratulations, Warren Central Dragons, cool. 2023 state champions. And to me, that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know, Glasgow and, and Barron are rivals. But, um, you know, if one is in the position to, to win a state championship, I think the whole community needs to come together and support that. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk about Mr. and Miss Basketball and get into some of the baseball and, and softball happenings that's been going on in the last week. At Don Franklin, we're more than a group of car dealerships. We're hardworking, everyday people of Kentucky. We strive daily to give 110% to our customers, our employees, and our families. We are committed to providing everyone with a safe and reliable vehicle. And we continue our tradition of supporting our local communities. At all 24 dealerships across Kentucky, we will treat you like family. Don Franklin Family of Dealerships, we are Kentucky. Extreme Fitness has doubled in size. Now with over 8,000 square feet of co-ed weights and an upgraded 90 degree sailing therapy pool. The Extreme Fitness Campus also holds the exclusive Extreme Fitness for Women Complex and Extreme Blend Smoothie Bar. You have to experience the variety of classes to realize the impact they have on their clients. Personal training is with the best in the business and is available and tailored to fit individuals. So start your journey today at Extreme Fitness and Health Club. to tell me about it um you know i was off last week so i didn't get to to talk a lot so i'm sure i'm gonna wear <laughs> you guys out this week um but mr and miss basketball was crowned mm -hmm. on sunday yep um everybody pretty much knew that reed shepherd from north laurel was gonna win the boys side um, he's committed to kentucky he'll be playing at uk next year haven forwards numbers not only her numbers this year but since she was um freshmen mm -hmm. have been astronomical and a lot of people didn't know i talked to haven's uncle yesterday and he reminded me that last year in the junior all-star game when the juniors played the seniors mm -hmm. she had a triple double against the seniors yeah and they beat them by 20 yeah and she's just repeatedly she's done it you know she's done it all year yeah you know uh i think we're talking about the miss basketball because a lot of people may not realize that her family's they, Horse both, cave. Mom and dad both went to Caverna, mm -hmm. right? And then on Monday on the show that I have with John Butler, the Brown Sports Bag, he coached both her parents when he was an assistant. Kelly and Raven. Yeah. Yes. And so he was talking about, you know, that uh, how, how good they were in mm -hmm. high school in sports and how good they were academically also in, yes. in you, high school. You've covered baseball games at Caverna. Yes. Kelly was probably one of the best hitters to ever play at Caverna. Mm -hmm. He used to hit them inside the tennis court. Okay. <laughs> um, he, he was a lefty. Uh, great, great, great people. Mm -hmm. um, they were always, I think they've been together since they were in like the eighth grade. Is that right? Uh, Kelly and Raven, yes. Uh, just a very, very, very loving family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even at Glasgow, they have ties to Miss Basketball. Simon was an assistant coach here at Glasgow. Yeah. Um, coached at LaRue, at Caverna. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelton Ford, which is her cousin, was. Um, a standout athlete at LaRue County. Mm -hmm. He moved to LaRue County from Caverna. He yep. later went to Troy yep. and played for Phil Cunningham, who was an assistant at Western. Yep. Um, finished up his career at Campbellsville, I Finished think. up at Campbellsville. Just a great family, but she's so deserving. And what people may not know about Haven is, you know, they had a parade for her yesterday, okay. welcoming her back. Uh, By the way, she, she, she's at Rowan County. That's where she's at. at I don't Rowan know if County. mentioned that. Yes, she's at Rowan County. And they had a softball game last night. Mm -hmm. She hit for the cycle. <laughs> she hit for the cycle in the softball game. 
She could play softball at just about any Division One school in She's the state. She's a Patrika Barlow. You know, Patrika Patrika Barlow. You know, she played four years of basketball at Louisville, and then and her then senior played softball. Year, yeah, went out for the softball team and started in center field. <laughs> She's like a Patrika Barlow. So we want to congratulate you, Haven Ford, on a outstanding career. And, and one more thing about Haven, if I'm not mistaken, Haven actually, I'm almost positive that she part- participated in the NFL's punt, pass, and kick at Bengal Stadium. She won her area right? when she was like eight or nine years old. That's yes, hilarious. so she can do everything. Um, but but speaking of softball, um, the Mark and Will show, I, I follow them mm-hmm. on social media, and they were doing their weekly players of the week. Um, and Katie Murphy is actually leading that poll. Yeah. I think she batted 1,000 last week. She Well, yes, for the week she did. For the week. As a matter of fact, I wrote down her stats because they beat Nelson County. They opened with a 24 to nothing win over Nelson County last Tuesday. She was 5 for 5, 8 RBI, uh, 3 doubles, a triple, a home run, and she scored 5 runs. Then they turned around and beat Bowling Green 15 to 4. She was 1 for 1 because she walked on, the, on another at bat. Actually, she walked twice in that game. So she only had two RBIs, uh, and but she did score four runs. Then they beat LaRue, which was previously undefeated, 19-3. to Wow. And she was four for four, six RBIs, a triple, uh, a double, and scored two runs. Uh, they Yesterday they beat Clinton County 7-1. to That's her only falter thus far. But, yeah, she opened the week. She did not miss a beat. And it, she had a grand slam. Yeah, yeah, in that game against Nelson County, I believe it was. A grand slam. <laughs> um, you know, we talked about her – during the, the regional previews mm-hmm. for the district and the region. And she's just, she's a phenomenal athlete. Yes. You know, she's uh, committed to go to WKU. She's just a junior. So, I mean, she's got a, this whole season. And a whole other year. And uh, so she's committed to go to WKU. I'm not sure when her signing day will be for that, but uh, it'll, I'm sure it'll be coming up sometime this spring. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, to just start out on fire like that, because really that's only – they were only off for a – well, I'll have to go back and tell you this. Um, I think it was her dad had told me that he told her to take a day off after they lost in the regional tournament to Bowling Green in the regional final, uh-huh. and she said no. And so she just came – she and Addison Smith off that basketball team. And there were, I think, Katie Geralds and Katie Elmore also, but those two primarily, I think, because they just walked out there and started playing softball. So she started on fire right out of the gate. I'm looking up um, – I'm sorry I didn't have that <laughs> – knowledge with me yeah um, I'm looking up Hart County softball as well as Caverna Caverna actually has has started off the season pretty good yeah they were two and0 they lost their last two games but they opened two and0 with a good couple of good games. Adriana Salvador Salvador is one of the better pitchers in the area mm-hmm. from what I understand uh, and she's young yeah I think she's a freshman she's a freshman. Year. She's a freshman. But she's been basically pitching since the sixth grade, I think, for yes. Caverna. Yes. Uh, Hart County, uh, I'm sorry. I thought they started off good. They didn't nope. start off too good. No, <laughs> they opened with a 19-9 loss to Glasgow. To Glasgow, yeah. yes. Um, and those those eighth grade girls that play basketball at Glasgow, uh, Ja'Kali Green, mm-hmm. she's a great softball player. Yeah, so Kayla Kirkpatrick and Jacali Green, they are the middle infield from, from the start. Uh, and then I think uh, uh, Sydney Kuykendall, she also played basketball. She plays right field and softball. She's more of a softball player than a basketball player probably. She's been – I think this is her third year starting actually in right field. So they've got, they've got some young players out there. Uh, I'm trying to think – if they they may have three or four seniors this year, but they have not had a bunch of seniors. They've had a young team for a while. The COVID year for Glasgow kind of wrecked them because they that that was this 2020 spring season that got canceled. Mm-hmm. They had a solid group of older players that would have played that year. So they've been kind of rebuilding the last couple of years with a bunch of middle schoolers for the most part and just a couple of older players. So they're kind of – they're still kind of in a rebuilding process, but they're finally starting to hit that point where they they should be more competitive in the district, which is going to be key because it's a loaded district now with Warren East joining it. I think I'm going to go – I may ride by. They play LaRue County at home tomorrow. Yeah, Glasgow? Yes. 
Yes, that's right. That may be a good good game for me to go watch. Yeah. LaRue, that game there, that LaRue, Barron Kenny game was a fascinating game because I think that is still LaRue's only loss. I think they won yesterday by about 10 or 12 runs. So the fact that Barron beat them so soundly, and here's the other thing about Barron. Barron graduated their uh, pitcher and their catcher last year. So they have got an eighth grader, Chloe Witcher, who's stepping in. Now she's been pitching JV, that kind of thing. And she's off to a good start as well. So, I mean, they, they're they they're uh, maybe better than people expected them out of the gate, I would say. And that's what, you know, I, I think it's, they said, because of the rotation of your arm. Mm-hmm. But it amazes me that these girls can pitch four games a week. And it, it's, it's, never, it's never an issue. Yeah. It is. Um, you can suffer some injuries in this area. But the thing is... In softball, you don't have that pop of the arm at the end of the release like you do in baseball, that overhanded kind of pop. And I think they've, they're have they working on pitching methods that kind of reduce that, like with follow-throughs and that kind of stuff. But yeah. What about baseball? Well, let's get to that in the next segment. The next segment? Yep. I'm anxious to see, see these baseball scores. All right. We're going to take another break. When we come back, James will lead us. <laughs> the great one will lead us okay. with the baseball scores. We'll be back in just a few minutes. At Don Franklin, we're more than a group of car dealerships. We're hardworking, everyday people of Kentucky. We strive daily to give 110% to our customers, our employees, and our families. We are committed to providing everyone with a safe and reliable vehicle. And we continue our tradition of supporting our local communities. At all 24 dealerships across Kentucky, we will treat you like family. Don Franklin Family of Dealerships, we are Kentucky. Extreme Fitness has doubled in size. Now with over 8,000 square feet of co-ed weights and an upgraded 90 degree sailing therapy pool. The Extreme Fitness Campus also holds the exclusive Extreme Fitness for Women Complex and Extreme Blend Smoothie Bar. You have to experience the variety of classes to realize the impact they have on their clients. Personal training is with the best in the business and is available and tailored to fit individuals. So start your journey today at Extreme Fitness and Health Club. Ben Hayes, KY Sports TV. James Brown, 104, thescore.com. What you don't know is we have these conversations in between the takes, and sometimes they just go off the rails. Crazy off the rails. Yes, you never know. I mean, you might you might have a conversation about uh, Muhammad Ali being dead in Arizona or something like That's that. That's right. It, you just, it just goes <laughs> everywhere. But we have fun. And actually, the man behind the camera and the production is probably – one of the funniest guys that I know mm-hmm. that doesn't try to be a funny guy. Yeah. Yeah, Aaron's funny. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron says a lot. Aaron Russell says a lot of funny stuff, and it's it's really a pleasure working with Aaron. Yes, sir. Uh, let's talk a little bit about baseball. Baseball. Let's go. Because that's what we told people we were going to talk about. Okay. So, <laughs> so you know, the, the thing about the spring sports is last year the KHSA had a board meeting. I think it was in January and decided they'd back up the spring sports season a week. None of the spring sports coaches knew about it. As a matter of fact, last year, they weren't in favor of it. I guess it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things this year because, that's, you know, it's all been ironed out. So mm-hmm. we started used to, historically speaking, if I go back mm, prior to about six years ago, the spring sports season would start the last week of March. So it would be this week, basically, that it would start. And uh, now it starts a week early. Actually, it would be next week that it would actually start. And then you'd go into spring break. So you may play a couple of games and then go, you know, everybody pack up and move to Florida for a week. Even uh, Caverna softball team's going to Florida to play in a tournament this year. They are, and they are in Glasgow's baseball, but none of the others around here are. Really? Yeah. So it's kind of rare. Used to everybody went. But I think people have kind of, like, Barron County baseball is going to play in a couple of spring break tournaments, I think, mm-hmm. at Taylor County and maybe at LaRue County. Mm-hmm. And so I think more people are starting to have spring break at home. I mean, you might go back to that conversation we had in the first segment about cost of things. It's, it's just so expensive. But anyway. Real quick. Yeah. What's your favorite baseball movie? Baseball movie? Yes. Since we're talking about baseball. 
Well, I mean, I'm going to reveal a little secret here to the people at home. I'm really not a fan of baseball. And he but, covers it all the time. I, I mean, I like covering sports sometimes more than I actually like the sport themselves. I mean, that goes – I love covering So golf. where do you get your knowledge of the sport if you don't like it? You just – you just well, I mean, make yourself like, do it? Yeah, I mean, it's my so job. So when you was little, you probably, your, your, your parents probably had to make you eat your green beans. I don't know about that. Yeah, they, they probably did. All right, I'm sorry. We'll go back to we'll Look, go back here's, to here's, why I don't, here's why I don't <laughs> like baseball. Because I, I was a hyperactive kid growing up, so I played sports that were, like, fast-paced. Played soccer, played basketball, ran, those kinds of things. So things like golf, baseball, I, I wasn't a fan of just growing up just because I didn't, I didn't enjoy them. So I can respect this and appreciate a sport uh, and respect the effort athletes. that goes into it and the athletes that participate in it and the skill necessary to be good at it, that doesn't mean I necessarily like the sport itself. Right. So, you know, I'm not really a big fan of golf. I mean, I know you love the game. I do. I'm not really good. I say I'm good, but I'm not really good. But I'm not terrible either. Yeah. But I just like to play. So, I mean, but I, I respect, you know, the effort that goes into it and the dedication, that kind of stuff. And it doesn't, I don't, put it down just because it's not my cup of tea. But have you never watched a baseball movie? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Sandlot's probably my favorite. But that's probably because I watched it with my son a lot. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm, sorry for, I'm sorry for interrupting your spring break story. About <laughs> not going. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, what's your favorite baseball? Major League. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You know, maybe it's not Sandlot. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a league of their own. Which I find to be hilarious. Or Bull, Dur Bull Durham was funny, too. Also a very good movie. Yes. But I'm not sure those movies are really about baseball. They are. They just happen to have baseball as Major part Leagues, of Willie Mays Hayes. He was fast. Wesley okay. Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to this baseball. So, okay. we got we got off to kind of a slow start locally because of the weather last week. And it's already disrupted the games. Uh, some of the ones that were planned to be played yesterday, Tuesday. Uh, so, in the 15th District... Warren East, which is maybe the favorite to win the region, is 0-2. They've lost two games to St. X, which I think is a defending state champion. So that's the only two games they got in last week. Barron County's 1-2. Uh, that's including the game from Monday. Glasgow's 1-2. That includes the game from Monday. Uh, and then uh, Allen County Scottsville's 1-3. That includes the game from Monday. So kind of a slow start on the baseball side of things. Uh, and unlike... Softball, as we mentioned in that previous segment, you know, pitching is key in baseball, but having more than one good pitcher is the most important thing. And that kind of leads to something that's going on in the 15th district this year that's a little different. They're going to play back-to-back -back games when it comes to the district schedule instead of spread out. So I think the first one is April 17th in, in, in terms of back-to-back. -back. And on that day, uh, I don't remember which way it works out. It's either Barron versus East and Glasgow versus Allen County Scottsville. So they'll play an away game and a home game. So you can't just load up with the same pitcher in every district game. So I, I like the way they've done that, and they're going to do that this year. And that means Barron and Glasgow mm -hmm. don't play till May 1st and 2nd. So we don't even get to see them play each other until late in the season. Softball. Back to softball, just on your standings. So do you think Barron is one of the favorites to win the region? No. They're not? I just think the when you get down to those tournament games, the inexperience in some key spots, especially in the batting order that they lost from last year, makes it hard for them to overcome South Warren and Greenwood this year. The 18th district baseball. Mm -hmm. I think Green's going to be the favorite. Would say, I would think so. LaRue, you might be sometimes, but Green might be the better team this year. But I think Hart is actually pretty good in baseball this year. I think they're they're better than they have been. Yeah. Uh, I think they improved quite a bit last year, as a matter of fact. You know, because we had that missing year, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard. Last year was a hard year to even decipher who might be good and who might not be. Because we, we didn't know who was coming back. Some of the school districts allowed the do-over. Some didn't. You know, and so you, it, was, it was kind of a muddled mess. It, things are working out a little better now in terms of, like, deciphering who might be good and who might not be. And you had the chance to go watch Caverna play. Yep. I don't think the result was good for them. No. But I think they have a very young team. New coach, Barrett Wright, mm -hmm. uh, who played at Glasgow, was their coach. Yep. Uh, I will say this. I was impressed with Dominic Grimes. He looked like a solid baseball player. Uh, 
that's another program that in recent years, it has a dynamic history on the mm -hmm. baseball diamond. But in recent years, it's struggled to field enough players. Uh, you, it's gone through several coaches, I think, over the last six or seven years. Like a yes. new one just about every year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Barrett's on his first But the run root there. of that problem mm -hmm. is no Little League. Yeah, I think we <clears throat> uh, talked about this maybe on one of these shows going back a few weeks ago. Very inactive. <clears throat> um, you know, a lot of those kids will go to Hart County or come to Glasgow and Barron mm -hmm. <clears throat> and play their Little League. But Tim Gowler has started the middle school program. Okay. And I think he's got like 24 kids, 25 kids out to play middle school baseball. So that's a, a step in the right direction to trying to rebuild that baseball program. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mentioned the history. I mean, everybody knows about the Doyles and winning two state championships in 61 and 72, but they don't realize that 2000, well, mid-90s, they were really good when you were playing. Mm -hmm. uh, Mid-2000s to, I mean, aughts, I guess is what it is. 2003 to 2008, somewhere in that window, they were really good. Mm -hmm. uh, had Derek Self there during that time. Mm -hmm. Played at Louisville, played professionally. So, I mean, there's been some really good baseball at Caverna through the years. It's just, it's kind of hit some hard times, and, and hopefully Barrett and those guys can get get it re-energized. And, you know, last year they had to <clears throat> give up the district because the field wasn't in playing conditions. Yeah. And, you know, as an alumni from Caverna, that's, that's very – disheartening to know that you have a program and the people that surrounding by the, that surrounds the program didn't even care enough about the program to make sure the field was playable. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Barrett, I, I, I tip my hat to him. Barrett actually got with coach Royce. Mm -hmm. That was his coach. Mm -hmm. Um, coach Royce came over. They looked at the field. Um, Amanda Abel, the, the, uh, superintendent at Caverna, Put a lot of she put a lot of resources in that facility, and yeah. now the facility look it look it's looking good. Yeah, you can tell they did a lot of work. It does look mm -hmm. a lot better, uh, and and it's a chicken and egg problem when it comes to those kinds of where do you allocate resources in a school district. Mm -hmm. If there's not interest in something, it's hard to say. Yeah, we need to put money into it. Mm -hmm. So you got to be convinced that you know you, that the person asking you for those resources is going to give it back in return by trying to generate interest in the sport. And I think that Barrett was. Sam, one of Sam Royce's only former players that is a head coach at the high school level. That's a little interesting fact. Well, he's had one other. David Lane was also brief, was, I Co think, for two Ta years for Caverna. David played at Glasgow? Yep. That's right. He moved to Mississippi. Yes. Yes. David stayed. David was Trevor's coach. I remember Coach Lane being, being at Caverna. Is that it for this week? That's it for this week. Uh, we will be back next week with a lot more, uh, a lot more what? Ah! Sports. <laughs> sports. That's all we ever talk about, sports. Yes. Okay. Unless it's money. It's for Ben Hayes, KY Sports TV. <laughs> James Brown, 104thescore.com. We've been here on Tell Me About It. Catch us every Thursday at 6 p.m. on Glasgow EPB Channel 6, the local channel, and online at Glasgow EPB YouTube channel.